Wally Renee here from the Mod Institute. Super excited to do part two of my denture border top tip where we're gonna be covering specifically muscles that are critical to capture when scanning edentulous ridges on the mandibular arch. And we're gonna go through a case that I scanned and take you step by step through how I scanned it and then what muscles were critical in determining where I placed those borders. All right, without further ado, let's just get into it. So when we took uh, a lower digital impression of a mandibular arch here, there's one thing that I just really want to stress that's ultra critical. And, and that is that I'm not trying to tell you that uh, conventional border molded impressions are bad. Um, I think that a custom tray with uh, border molding is the gold standard. However, I am finding that I achieve phenomenal results from intraoral scans alone. And that enables me to cut two, if not three appointments from my clinical workflow when I'm doing dentures. And that therefore then lets me treat more people more affordably and be more efficient. So I want to just try to convey to you that, you know, this is just one way to do it. I've been doing digital dentures now for five years, completely digital with no impression material. And I've done thousands and thousands of these and I've learned some stuff over the years. One is, with proper training and a proper scanner, you could achieve phenomenal results with retention just from an intraoral scan. And although the muscle borders are a little bit more difficult to discern um, compared to a border molded impression, I do find that the critical retention areas and the comfort to the patient are maximized with an intraoral mucostatic impression. So let's just go through a quick um, case that I did where we're scanning. Now here we're going up at least two thirds out the retromolar pad and then even to the pterygo mandibular raffae. And then we're gonna go ahead and get the ridge and we're looking at the buccal shelf where the buccinator is gonna attach and labial frenum there, lingual frenum, the genioglossus, all the way down into the mentalis there and then on to the retromylohyoid fossa which is where the superior pharyngeal constrictor is going to be and also the Mylohyoid muscle. Here again, we're getting the, the buccinator there with the buccal shelf, and that is at a, at a stretched position when we do this. It's also really important to note that there is no tissue movement when, you, when, I, when I scan. I'm using retractors specifically designed for soft tissue scanning. You can't use um, just conventional retractors. This is super easy to do. Um, that whole entire impression there, if you look at the time, was two minutes and 58 seconds, which is great. And it's very comfortable for the patient and easy for me to delegate to my team members. So now looking at this, let's go through the muscles and just talk about kind of what, what I look for when I do an intraoral scan and what I try to achieve landmark wise on a mandibular denture. First and foremost, I have to get the complete retromolar pad. Um, even sometimes extending up into the pterygo mandibular raffae. I need to also capture all the way my into my retromylohyoid fossa, even into the superior pharyngeal constrictor and all the way down to where my mylohyoid is going to attach down there. I'm going to try to capture um, and stretch my mentalis muscle and depressor labii inferioris so that I could extend my lower denture border well onto those muscles. In addition, the buccinator is going to be stretched um, and this is going to be important for seeing that buccal frenum and also understanding and extending my denture onto the buccal shelf where a lot of the retention will come from. Lastly, the lingual frenum needs to be captured as well and it also needs to be something that's clear and distinct. So when I am marking my uh, borders from an intraoral scan, I am looking at a few critical things. Um, number one, so this is my intraoral scan here and you know ExoCAD or many other denture design softwares will create kind of like a block out model, which is this baby blue model. Number one is you really got to be careful with that labial frenum there. Um, I am extending down into my mentalis muscle and on my buccinator, I am avoiding my buccal frenum. I'm going all the way up on my buccal shelf, avoiding the masseter attachment and temporalis attachment. I'm going at least two thirds up my retromolar pad and deep into my retromylohyoid fossa. 
extending all the way down into um, the free movable tissues on the lingual, avoiding the lingual frenum. And again, deep into my retromylohyoid fossa here, where I am actually adding a lot of retention to this denture. Well onto my buccal shelf there for retention. You could sit on the bux buccinator muscle, it's not a big deal, which is also why I think border molding is overrated here. And then deep down onto the mentalis muscle down there, just like that. And most of the retention for this denture is going to come from the retromylohyoid fossa, the buccal shelf, and me in my digital design adding selective pressure to the denture borders in critical areas. This is how we're able to add back pressure on a mucostatic uh, denture. And so this is kind of what the soft tissue just looks like, again, uh, from my lower denture border. Now, you know, worst case scenario, if this was something that you, you know, 3D printed, maybe a monoblock try-in with the teeth and decided that it lacked retention, you could always um, redo a light body wash into this and with some border molding and scan that and reestablish your fit if you need to. However, I typically go straight to final uh, denture with appropriate um, split file design and I think I get really good results. In fact, um, I don't even have to really pip my denture and look for pressure spots from intraoral scans like I do with physical impressions. And so anyway, I hope this helps guys. And again, I want you to keep an open mind. I'm not trying to say that this is better than a border molded uh, custom tray. I'm just trying to say that, you know, many of us have been very successful with dentures using just pure digital techniques and the scanners are getting better and easier to do this with and the time savings is quite profound in addition, uh, when combining this with other digital techniques such as face scanning and photographs, um, you could easily capture um, everything that you need to design a denture in a single 30 minute appointment. I hope this helps as usual guys. I really do um, wanna see you attempting to try to scan like this. Reach out if you have any concerns or if you need any help.